All right, let's dive into three really powerful tools you often hear about in the data science world. Kubeflow, MLflow, and Apache Airflow. They all deal with managing workflows, especially in machine learning and data engineering, but they do it quite differently. Our goal today is to sort of unpack what each one does best, compare them, and maybe help you figure out which one uh, fits your needs. That's a great plan because, you know, getting machine learning models or complex data pipelines from an idea into actual production, that's, well, it's complicated. And what's interesting here is how Kubeflow, MLflow, and Airflow each bring a different philosophy to the table, really. They reflect different priorities, different team structures, even different existing tech stacks. Understanding that is, I think, crucial for making a smart choice. Absolutely. Different philosophies, that's a good way to put it. So let's start with Kubeflow. This one's open source, and it's built directly on Kubernetes. Think of it as aiming for that uh, complete end-to-end -end machine learning workflow. So from prepping data, training models, all the way to serving them. It includes specific bits like Kubeflow pipelines for managing those steps in a scalable way, and KF serving for the deployment part. Right, and that Kubernetes foundation is really the key thing to grasp about Kubeflow. It means it's almost, well, purpose-built for teams who are already using Kubernetes heavily for their infrastructure. It plugs right into that whole cloud-native containerized world, which is, you know, fantastic for scalability if that's your environment. Okay, so Kubeflow, comprehensive ML on Kubernetes. Got right. it. But what if your main focus isn't necessarily the whole Kubernetes infrastructure integration, but more, let's say, the machine learning development part itself? Ah, well, that's where MLflow often comes into the picture. It's also open source, but its focus is narrower and... Uh, arguably more targeted specifically at the ML lifecycle. So things like tracking experiments, managing different versions of models, handling deployment. Exactly. Things like experiment tracking, model versioning, packaging models, deployment. It emphasizes simplicity and flexibility. MLflow is known for being pretty lightweight. You can run it almost anywhere. You can log your experiments easily, keep track of your models, push them out to different platforms like, say, SageMaker or Azure ML. It's often really popular with data scientists because it lets them iterate quickly without getting bogged down in heavy infrastructure concerns right away. It's quite adaptable. Adaptable ML lifecycle management, right. That makes sense. Okay, so we have Kubeflow for the K8's native end-to-end, -end, MLflow for the flexible lifecycle part. But what about workflows that go beyond just ML, like uh, general data processing, ETL jobs? Yeah, and that's the perfect lead-in to Apache Airflow. Airflow is... Well, it's kind of the veteran in this space, but its focus is much broader. It's a general purpose workflow orchestrator. It's used massively for data pipelines, ETL extract, transform, load tasks, basically anything that involves scheduling and monitoring a sequence of tasks. And it uses those DAGs, right? Directed as cyclic graphs. Precisely. You define your workflow as a, yes. graph, a series of tasks, what depends on what, and Airflow handles the scheduling, retries, monitoring, all of that. The big strengths of Airflow are its incredible extensibility, there are integrations for practically everything, and it's huge community. Uh -huh. It's fantastic for complex workflows, especially ones that aren't solely focused on machine learning. It orchestrates tasks, whatever those tasks might be. So a clear difference there from the more ML-centric tools. Okay, this is great. We've got Kubeflow, MLflow, Airflow. They all manage workflows, but in distinct ways. Right. So the big question for anyone listening, yeah. how do you choose? What does this actually mean for you when you're picking a tool? Yeah, that's the million-dollar question, isn't it? And I think it boils down to really looking at your specific project needs and maybe just as importantly, your existing infrastructure and team expertise. If you need that full end-to-end -end ML platform and you're already committed to Kubernetes, Kubeflow is a very strong contender. It integrates deeply. If your priority is more about flexible, um, lightweight management of the ML lifecycle itself, tracking experiments, managing models, deploying easily across different environments, then MLflow is probably a better fit. It's less opinionated about infrastructure. And if your main challenge involves complex data orchestration, ETL pipelines, scheduling lots of varied tasks, maybe including some ML, but not exclusively, then Airflow's power and flexibility as a general orchestrator is likely what you need. That clarifies it nicely. So quick recap, Kubeflow for the full ML pipeline experience on Kubernetes, MLflow for that focused adaptable ML lifecycle management experiments models, and Airflow for the broad, heavy-duty data workflow orchestration. Exactly. And maybe one final thought to leave people with. While we talk about which tool is best, it's rarely about just raw features or power. The truly best choice is the one whose fundamental design philosophy and specific capabilities align most closely with your team's specific problems, your workflow challenges, and the technical environment you're already working in. It's about finding the best fit, not just the most features. That alignment is key.